Hello, every folks, and good morning. Um, okay, so imagine my surprise this morning. I had just finished uh, going through some uh, courses, you know, was uh, was studying up some stuff, went to go take a little bit of a break, was looking over the, uh, it, I had just found the no skills uh, save file from, uh, you know, like, hell, it's been like six years ago now. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, like, how to possibly continue this scuffed save file in Dakota. And, um... And yeah, then get a little uh, ding on my phone all of a sudden, and uh, you know, a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, a thing comes up. This thing comes up, namely, finally there was uh, there's actual leaks on Tactics Ogre Reborn. So finally, we can discuss what the hell this thing is. It it's a locked port. I mean, that that about sums it up. Um, so okay, a couple of quick things because I wanted to look over the art here and just kind of see what we see, so to speak. So. First of all, for whatever reason, like, I, I want to compare this real quick with the original art here. Uh, let's see if this actually comes up properly. Eh, it's all... Okay, it doesn't quite come up the way I'd like it to. But the art that they have is basically the same intro scene uh, for this particular one. Apparently, this is, like, the background menu image thing. Um, so far, it's the uh, PS5 version that's leaked. Um, like, overall art style, it doesn't seem like much has changed, though they do seem to have gone for, like, an interesting mix of a style that wasn't quite released. Um, what I mean by this, so you see how it's all, like, bright and shiny and everything else on everyone's uh, faces and everything else? There, there's a lot of light coming in. Uh, the original one was way darker here. Um, so basically with, with this original one, um, let's see if we, yeah, there we go, we can kind of zoom in a little bit. They were going more for details, uh, this was definitely more the PS1 uh, SNES kind of style here where they were going for uh, kind of grimmer and wider and taller faces and everything else um, and then uh, you know there, there were certain situations where they had art made for situations that didn't quite happen that way Barbus is a hammer guy after all but whatever um, <clears throat> also wrong sword but screw it um, what I want to point out about this one is it reminds me a hell of a lot uh, there, there's a couple of um, kind of like pre-release uh, uh, portraits and stuff like that uh, for Denim and Cashua that uh, that had shown up um, uh, that had actually shown up in uh, the uh, uh, the remake uh, just kind of buried in the code there um, like I always just called it Dead Denim because it's just this weird old version um, that uh, kind of made no sense I'll, I'll put it as the thumbnail if I can uh, if I can find the dang thing again because uh, I had made a, a cheat code using uh you know, using all this stuff at one point. Actually, come to think of it, I wonder if uh, I wonder if I can pull it up. Uh, I might have had it uh, saved on this uh, PSP I was playing off of here. Um, <laughs> that'd be something else. Um, so let's go, go over the uh, the different things here. See if we can maybe f gain any kind of insight on what any of this stuff is. Because aside from that, there really isn't too much to go on. They just have uh, different re-release kind of stuff going on. It looks like it's going to be a straight port with slightly different art for whatever reason. Um, again, same poses, same pictures. Like, th this one right here looks a lot like the original uh, Japanese SNES cover art. Um, but they're looking a bit more proportional these days and a bit less dramatic and taller for some reason. Um, this is just the same picture again. But again, a bit more... I, I want to say it's almost like near esque like there's everything's just way brighter and more subdued um, For whatever reason uh, it seems like uh, you know Lancelot's looking a little bit more uh, Meek these days uh, they have these two uh, standing up this time around which okay that more closely matches what actually happens in the scene there um, Not sure what else uh, there is to really say about it. It looks like it's gonna pretty much be a straight port it would be really cool to see if they actually combined, you know, all the different games of the series. But let's be honest, this more than likely is, uh, you know, this is probably just a uh, just a, a straight port of the PSP version. If you've never emulated it, if you've never run it on other things, uh, basically, if you put it up to a bigger resolution, it still looks fantastic. Uh, for the longest time, I, you know, was streaming it off of a Vita, and it looked beautiful. It looked fine. There were a lot of details you could never see on the PSP version. Like, for example, if you look at the uh, the Headhunters icon, you can see the like the entirety of Denim's sprite is actually uh, uh, in um, uh, within the uh, the Headhunters flag, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, uh, other potential thoughts here. It is possible that we may. Uh, th this seems kind of unlikely, but it seems like. Uh, it may potentially be possible that there's other stuff re-released. I'd heard a few 
like things here and there as far as uh, other bits of the uh, series potentially being allowed to expire. Um, because at this point, most of the series is actually like unobtainable. Like if they re-release this one, that you know, that's that's great as it is. Um, but it would be really, 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 really nice to be able to access you know, most of the series uh, in, in a way that doesn't require piracy and emulation and all that kind of thing. Um, because, yeah, at this point, I mean, looking at the original one, you had uh, March of the Black Queen that ended up getting released on SNES, PS1, and Saturn. None of those versions are officially available anymore, with the Wii version of March of the Black Queen apparently being uh, unavailable in most areas. I have I want to point out I've heard conflicting things on that, but either way, that, that would just be the SNES version anyway. The PS1 version was far better, the uh, Saturn version. Um, it, basically... The PS1 version added a whole lot of information that would is just generally useful. It was the best for quality of life stuff. Uh, the Saturn version added recolored sprites and things, so that was kind of cool. Um, and then, um, and then, yeah, you had uh, Prince of Zenobia that existed, but no one really, uh, no one really cares about that. Um, you had um, uh, th that one was on uh, uh, Neo Geo or whatever else it was. Uh, also, wow. Uh, Friggin' Google is going crazy over here. Like, how dare you talk? Talk to me. I need I need instructions. It keeps trying to do random commands on my phone. Um, Night of Lotus only ever came out on GBA. It never even got ported to anything, which is just a dang shame because that game is amazing. Um, uh, we had uh, OB64 only came out on the 64. Uh, it also came out on Wii U and uh, and the, the Wii, it's apparently specifically in Japan. Um... That is to say, the Wii in Japan, we got the uh, the Wii U version. Again, I've heard conflicting things as to whether you can still get them or not. I believe if you buy it off the web store, you might still be able to uh, to potentially get it. I'm not 100% sure. Um, uh, what else? I mean, we had PSP Locked that just recently went off the store, which is more than likely the, you know, the re-release of what we're seeing here. Uh... All the stuff about the art and everything else just makes me think this is just going to be an HD scaled up port, which is nice, because again, the game on its own merits holds up just fine. I mean, I'm going on my 12th year of, chal 12th year of challenge running this game and still find new crap to find interesting every single dang time. Um, there's a whole lot of... Uh, really, all that, all that it needed was a better tutorial. That's about all there is to say on that. I mean, it, it definitely needed a better one, but what can you really do? Um, it, for those on f who uh, potentially haven't played... Um, hang on, let's see if we can zoom in on this one real quick, see if there's any additional details. Um, for those who haven't played Vagrant Story, by the way, um, it a lot of uh, a lot of stuff uh, is very similar there. Like, uh, you'll notice uh, like the finishers go by the same name as the break arts. A lot of the gear is very similar. Um, there's been a pretty clear trend towards combining like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics uh, whole universe along with uh, the Tactics Ogre uh, universe. It's the same people that, uh, I, well, mostly the same guy that did uh, writing, very similar teams, you know, very similar themes through all of them. Um, if you put uh, Ogre as kind of the prequel to a lot of the FFT stuff, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in Vagrant Story that ends up getting redone for Tactics Ogre. Like, if you, if you kind of look at it as a whole trend there, you had the original Tactics Ogre on the SNES, it came up with a whole bunch of neat ideas, had some issues fleshing them out, FFT does it in another franchise, they end up adding some stuff, but it's a little bit of a clumsy implementation. Vagrant Story was their next for a kind of like in, with, uh, with Tactics Ogre there, where they kind of got really artsy with it. And potentially got way too complicated. Um, and then they tried to kind of redo the kind of affinities and resistances and armor and whatever system. Um, and uh, redo that for uh, uh, for Tactics Ogre. So you got the whole attack and defense system. It was a very interesting system. Unfortunately, we didn't see too much of it being very obvious until the One Vision mod came around to basically explain the mechanics. <laughs> but... Um, if once you, like if you play One Vision and you go back and you re-explore it, there's 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 so much uh, awesomeness to uh, to the way that it's handled. 
Like, just that moment when you finally realize, like, oh, crap, you know, all these weapons that I thought were trash are actually really good. You just got to get them past armor. And then you just sort of, like, do this whole logic puzzle of, like, okay, if I combine this element and I combine, you know, this uh, this weapon over here and then I mess with the weather and then I go and I have this guy spam this other stuff to increase the max damage to then just, like, do all this galaxy brain crap to suddenly make your walking stick, you know, go and one-shot somebody. Those moments are just gold. That's why it's so dang good for challenge runs. Um... But, um, uh, but any, any, anyways, so yeah, the, like, Tactics Ogre kind of took the weird implementation of the skills from FFT, um, took the, uh, really complicated stuff from Vagrant Story, just kind of boiled it down, combined it all together. If you hear rattling in the background, for some reason, I'm just playing with a random card case here. Um, and so yeah, it, I mean, there's, it's, it's pretty clear I might like this game based off the ridiculous amount of content on my channel here, but, um, any, anyways, I'm sure... Long story short, I'm sure this is going to be a straight port. They may include some additional, like, FFT kind of references, but they were already there. Uh, all of it was already pretty much combined to begin with. Um, you've got a lot of back and forth between the different series. Again, same people. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of Tactics Ogre stuff already in their MMO, so I'm sure they were walking towards combining them, but I really wouldn't imagine it would be much more than maybe a few rewrites but almost certainly just a direct port of the PSP game. Uh, probably upscaled, and I don't know what else. I mean, most of the remakes for a lot of older and more complicated games have more or less just been resolution upgrades. Uh, Legend of Mana really comes to mind there, um, where more or less it was the exact same artwork, and then they added a few extra scenes. Like, for example, if, you know, if there was just kind of polishing up some of the stuff that was missing from the Tactics Ogre remake... I uh, would definitely say, like, uh, Dagon having the option to pay him off instead of fighting him. That really should have been in there. It's not a super complicated fight, and it would be kind of logical at that point if you had saved your money from the beginning of the game to be like, no, this is blood money, you take it, you know, you need it more. And it would be a cool little way to, you know, reward challenge runs of not using shops up to that point. Um, the crafting system, I would hope that they polish that up a little bit. I hope that they include an Iron Man mode. I know that seems like a weird hot take on this, but again, as somebody who has played this game to death, if you want the crafting system to make sense in a logical context, play it with like with a permadeath rule set. Like, any units go down, they're gone, you lose denim, you delete your save file. I know that seems like an arbitrary, nonsensical challenge, but here's the thing on like how they did the crafting and where I think their logic was on it, because... Like, when you're looking through all of it, it seems like, oh, this is just stupid grind. You know, I go and I run Tyne Mouth eight times, and I collect all those coins, and I go and I uh, sell them off for uh, for Goth and all that. Um, which is funny, because thinking about it, I don't think in the last decade or so I've referred to uh, the money in the game as Goth ever. Anyway, at, so after you're, you know, off-selling the, uh, <laughs> selling off the, uh, the English Isles or whatever else, um... So then you go and you buy more items, and then you craft more materials. And the thought process of many, including myself, going into it was just, this is just grind, it's just time extension. But if you're going at it with a mindset of, like, every fight can be the last fight there, you know, you lose your leader, you lose the game, um, then suddenly, you know, when you see an, a crafting thing fail, it sort of becomes a whole risk-reward type of thing. So if they, they do what I thought they probably meant to in the first place include an Iron Man mode, that, like, that whole system makes a lot more sense. Now, you might be saying it's random punishment, but here's the thing. It's not random. It, it's basically punishing you if you do stuff early. They do, they did need to tweak it up a little bit, but they actually did already tweak the game for the Western release. If you play the Japanese version, the base stats of all your characters go up ten times faster. This is completely busted once you include the DLC, because your team becomes stupidly powerful. Now, the thing is, the uh, the crafting uh, uh, chance to succeed was based off of your ba uh, base stats. Now, if you have the DLC, this is perfectly fine, because by the time you get to the end game, a lot of your stuff is up to 100% crafting odds. Um, and so, for example, things like orbs end up being a potential money sink early on, but then are functionally just printing cash by the time you come back there and, you know, like, post-game and all that kind of thing. So it's kind of a cool development system. They just needed to kind of tweak it a little bit. I believe what happened, um, and actually something that I've heard come up for One Vision and all that kind of thing, 
there probably just were some things they couldn't go back and adjust. So more than likely it was a, you know, best they could kind of scenario. But anyway, point being, I'm, I'm really, 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 really hoping that it will get some kind of weird difficulty options like that. It's a game that benefits so much from that stuff. And even if it doesn't, I mean, I'm, I don't know how, when, how, on what, whatever, but I do plan to get whatever this is whenever it comes out. Um, it's one of the few cases where I'd actually go out of my way to get something immediately. Um, but yeah, hopefully this has been at least somewhat interesting. I uh, would be curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this uh, remake or slightly different remake or whatever the hell it happens to be. And my kind of pipe dream that'll never happen would be that they basically took all of the series and smashed it together in uh, in like a TOPSP system. That'll never happen. It would be a logistical nightmare to do, but it'd be real dang cool to have that happen. Who knows, maybe we'll finally get a uh, official canon for all of it, because up to this point it has been intentionally designed with a uh, sort of loose canon that pretty much any outcome of the story could have uh, potentially been correct, and none of them are exactly possible. <laughs> um, Alright, so that'll be that. You guys take care, and see you in the next one.